piling in and funneling in. I hope everyone's doing well this morning. Uh, we have a, a smoother seas, if you will, this Friday as compared to last. So we'll let everyone get in and uh, get their camera on and mics muted. And we'll get started here in the next few seconds. So I uh, hope everyone has had a good week. All right. I'm not sure you're coming through. Can you hit that button? I had to undo it and do it. Oh, okay. All right. Um, okay. Is, can everyone hear me okay? All right. Good, good. All right, guys. Make sure, make sure you mute your mics. Make sure you mute your mics. Uh, and then what we'll do is at the question and answer portion, I'll ask you to unmute your mic and then we'll unmute you on our end and you can fire away and we'll get those questions answered. Uh, I want to welcome everyone. Happy Friday to Renaissance Academy Online. I'm Chris Williams. I will be your instructor for Balance University Online. I'm also the author of Balance University. Um, the goals of Balance University is to increase your strength, your mobility, and help keep you independent for as long as possible. We want you uh, to stay in motion, and the way to do that is to have a strong core, strong legs, and continue to exercise with, with all these moves that we'll be doing today. General safety, make sure you have a chair, something solid to hold on to as we go through these movements. Confidence is key, so I want everyone to make sure that they're very safe uh, and that they're focused when we're going through these movements. Remember, there's a modification for everything. So if something seems a bit hard or, or you don't feel comp, uh, confident, that's okay. I will see that and I'll show you a modification that we can do. Or if it's too easy, I'll show you a progression. Okay. Remember to breathe. There are certain movements where well, I'll instruct you how to breathe through the movement. But overall, just nice, smooth breaths. Uh, the, the Balance University program is built on four pillars. And these components or pillars are absolutely necessary to improve your balance. Those pillars include strength, posture, flexibility, and of course, balance. And those are the things that we can work on on the outside. And of course, there are a myriad of issues when it comes to balance, like the vestibular system and uh, the mechanoreceptors, neuropathy can impact that. In fact, we're gonna talk a little bit of that, about that today in our mentions and tips. So we'll perform two exercises in each pillar, except for the balance pillar, we'll do four exercises. Uh, and remember, questions and answers will stop at the end of each pillar or each component, and I'll allow you to ask a question if you have one, and you can fire away. And then at the end of class, I did not do this with uh, this last week, I do apologize, we'll have a Q&A session at the end of class. So I have it circled in asterisks there on my paper, so I was just in a rush to get you guys on time and out of there, but we'll do that today. So uh, first, are there any questions over last week's handout? Any questions? Good, good. Everyone practice? Yes? <laughs> good, good, good. You'll see that paying dividends when we start going through our assessments, okay? So this week's handout, I know you guys have already got it. Rose sent that out a little early, but that's okay. Uh, if you printed it out, you got it there. You can see our mentions. Um, a little tip I want to show you guys is something that I do when I work in the homes. And I use these colored dots. I use these colored dots here. Uh, sometimes with folks that have particular issues with their gait, right? Maybe their gait length is shortened for whatever reason. So I like to use these dots. I'll use yellow. Yellow is a good bright color. So we have yellow and orange here, all right? And so what I like to do is whenever we're in our position of confidence, right? We've been in our position of confidence. That's a split stance where we're 95 to 100% confident that we're not gonna fall. Now we can add all kinds of variables here, such as moving our arms. We can move our arms on the transverse plane, on the sagittal plane, right? And that adds a bit of a variable, makes this stance a bit harder. I can also close my eyes. Once I become very efficient, I want to extend and get better at my balance, so I constantly need to challenge myself, hence the variables. 
So what I do is I'll use these dots and I'll have folks put one foot on one dot and one foot on the other. And we'll just continually slide that dot out. And what we'll do is we'll start with our feet side by side and we'll step. And it takes a lot of strength. You don't realize how much strength this takes. Some people it's really difficult to push themselves back. But if you yourself or you have a loved one that is struggling with their balance, using dots gives them a visual cue on where to land their foot, all right? Now, when we do this too, there's some issues that can come into play, such as neuropathy, okay? And I'm seeing more and more neuropathy in women than men, which is unusual, uh, or what I thought was unusual, according to my friend, he's a physician here in Naples, he says, you know, that's what we're seeing a lot of too. So, the way neuropathy impacts balance is it affects the nerves in our legs, right? Particularly our feet. We have mechanoreceptors at the bottom of our feet that can detect pressure. So as I lean to my left here, I have mechanoreceptors, these nerves in my feet that send signals to my brain. My brain tells the muscles which muscles to contract so I don't go all the way over and vice versa. So these nerve endings can be impacted by neuropathy. It can also be impacted by the shoes we wear. Right, And if we're wearing big cushiony shoes or we have orthotics, the nerve endings or mechanoreceptors in the bottom of our feet are landing inside our shoe and not necessarily flat on the ground. And the way our foot lands and lays in our shoe can be quite different than the way it really lands on the ground. For instance, if you have an arch that's falling or you have flat feet and you put an orthotic in your shoe to keep your arch, right? So versus how that foot lands in the shoe versus the floor can make an impact too. You want to practice your balance with your shoes off if you can. Now don't go walking around Target with your shoes off, especially these days. But certainly if you're at home and, and you can, you're working on your balance, you want to take your shoes off, okay? All right. Now, let's get going. You guys, any questions there on the tips and mentions? I'm trying to... Give you guys, all right. First thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna start with a mild jog. We're gonna jog in place for about 20 minutes. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Let's have everyone stand and let's move behind our chair. We're gonna go through our assessments this morning. All right, that shirt looks really good, Michelle. Gotta tell you. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, let's start. I'm just gonna turn my chair sideways. I'm gonna face you so you can see me. We're going to start with our feet hip width apart, two verbal cues. We're going to close our eyes, get our bearings, and then we're going to lift our hand. Remember, be confident, okay? If you're not confident, keep your hand on the chair. Knees are slightly bent. Let's begin. Eyes closed, hand on the chair. Get your bearings, all right? And raise your hand if you feel confident. 15 seconds begins now. Good. Core tight. That's it. In five, four, three, two, one. Eyes open. Very good. Let's move our feet side by side as close as you can get them together. All right. Same two verbal cues. Nice and tall. Shoulders back, chin up. Here we go. Knees slightly bent. Eyes closed. And if you feel confident, you may raise your hand off that chair now. Just, just an inch. Good. If you don't feel confident, you feel yourself swaying a bit, go ahead and grab that chair. Good. We're training our brain. We're teaching those mechanoreceptors how to feel that pressure and how to translate those signals from the brain. This is called neuromuscular efficiency. And time, eyes open. Very good. So let's move our chair to our left side. I want your left leg closest to the chair. We're going to practice standing on one foot, two versions. First, we're going to do with our eyes open. The second, we're going to stand on one foot with our eyes closed. I'll give you more instructions when we get to that second one. Nice and tall. We're going to be standing on our left foot, raising our right. Let's shift our weight to our left foot. Get your bearings. Eyes open. Right heel off the ground, 
right toes off the ground. My right foot is completely in the air now, just an inch though. I don't want to go behind or in front. I want to go straight up. That way if I begin to lose my balance, it can go right down to the ground, okay? Find something in front of you. Time has started. Focus. Bend your knee. That's it. And three, two, one, and time. Same thing, this time we're gonna close our eyes. Uh, let me emphasize, if you don't feel confident letting go of the chair with your eyes closed, then please don't do that. We want everyone to be safe, okay? Here we go. Shifting our weight to our left foot. Our right heel comes in the air. Now I want you to close your eyes. Get your bearings, get your bearings. When you're ready, lift that right foot in the air like before, just an inch off the ground. Eyes open if you need to, eyes open if you need to. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and open. Well done, very good. Let's rotate our chair to the other side. Fantastic. <clears throat> All right, same song and dance, just different leg. All right, here we go. First is gonna be with our eyes open. Let's shift our weight to our right foot. Our right heel is in the air. Get your bearings, bend your knee. Left foot comes all the way up into the air, just an inch though. If you feel comfortable, you may let go of the chair. Time has started. Find something in front of you and focus. Very good. Five, four, three, two, one, and time. Same thing, this time we will close our eyes. Okay, here we go. Shift in our weight, listen to the verbal cues. Left heel off the ground, eyes closed. Get your bearings, bend your knee. If you feel comfortable and confident, raise that foot into the air, that left foot. All right, if you feel comfortable and confident, you may move to two fingers or one finger, or you can lift your hand all together. Keep it close though, we want everyone to be safe. And five, four, three, two, one, and time. Good job, Nancy. Well done, good, Margaret. All right, let's have everyone to the chair. We're gonna. Uh, move our chair around. We're going to sit in front. If you'd like to grab a drink of water, now's a good time to do that. I'm going to grab a shot myself. <clears throat> Okie doke. This morning, we have a lot of balance work in all of our pillars. As you will notice, a lot of these exercises we do have a lot of value, right? It's going to give us a lot of uh, uh, value for our time. And they, they transcend. You have a lot of exercises that can go from posture to strength and vice versa, or even strength to balance, such as uh, what we'll do second, which will be our asterisk exercise, our single leg laterals. First, what we're going to do is our EQA, our eccentric quad activity. This is one of my favorites. We're going to sit very slow, sitting slow, all right? And we're gonna add a little twist in there today. Our feet are hip width apart, a little wider. As you can see, my feet are about the same width as my chair, all right? You may use your hands to guide yourself as you sit down. I do want to avoid the plop. One of the main goals of this exercise is to try to avoid the plop, okay? So think about that as we descend. Okay, we're gonna sit, but we're gonna take four seconds to do so. Hands in front or by your side. All right, ready? Sitting slow and begin. Stick your bottom out. One, two, three, avoid the plop, and four. Good. And we're up. One, two, three, four. Excellent. And up. Good. And one. 
You see how I'm getting my nose over my toes? Good, that weight is shifting to my heels and down. Excellent. And up. Good. And one, two, three, and four. That's it. Two more, guys. And up. And one, two, three, and four. Good. Last one. And one, two, three, and four. Excellent. Now, when you get your hand out, I don't know if I mentioned this last class, we were in such a weird state. If you notice, you'll see these two exercises here. What I like to do is the top and then do the bottom. When it comes to sets and reps, how many times you should do each exercise, I always recommend doing one to two sets. Each set, you should aim for anywhere between six to 12 repetitions. Now, of course, if it's hard, you can do less. If it's easy, you can do more. But the general rule is one to two sets for six to 12 repetitions, okay? And, and I should make a note, I'm gonna make a note to add that to the sheet and sets and reps. Guys. Okay, next exercise. We're going to be on the left side of our chair here, left side of our chair, and what I'm actually going to have you do is you're going to flip upside down, you're going to stand on your head. I'm just kidding. Just making sure everybody's awake. It's early Friday. We're going to be doing our single leg laterals. So we're going to shift our weight to our left foot. We're going out, pause, and in. If you can, Try to keep your foot in the air. Don't have to. If you can, let's give it a shot. Here we go. And one, hold. Good, and in. Two. Perfect. Three, if you can let go of that chair, go ahead and let go. Maybe use one or two fingers. And four, if, that, if you don't feel confident, then go ahead and hang on. Five. Good. Six. Now notice I'm not going so far out. I'm losing that neutral spine position. Seven. My knee is slightly bent. Core is tight. Eight. Good. Good job, Margaret. Nine. Good, Judy. And ten. Two more. Good, Nina. Eleven. And 12. Oh, oh, and down. Good. All right, let's rotate to the other side. <clears throat> All right. Do the same thing. We're going to shift our weight. We're going to lift our left foot into the air. Bend your knee and begin. One and in. Two, good, three, that's it, four, and five, and six, seven, notice everything we do is under control, good, seven, and eight, Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, and relax. So I have a, a, an old habit. Uh, I like to hold my hand in front when I do this. This is because when I was in seventh grade, I had a coach whom I, I'm very good friends with now. Uh, he told us when we were doing certain exercises and stretching where you needed to balance, if you touch your belly button, you'll never fall. Uh, that's not entirely true, <laughs> but it is something that has stuck with me over the years. So if you see me, that's, that's what's happening. All right, guys, let's move our chair to the front there. 
All right, we're gonna go back to our sitting slow. However, we're gonna add a little wrinkle. Of course, you don't have to do this if you don't feel comfortable. If you do, this is a good variable. I'm gonna demonstrate, you watch, we'll do it together. All right, this is, this is demonstration. We're gonna go down nice and slow, right? And then we come up, we're gonna raise one leg, two, and then we'll go down again. Now again, if you don't feel comfortable, leave that part out, okay? But for those of you who do, uh, even you don't even have to raise your leg as high as I did, all right? Try to put your foot back where it left from, okay? Put it in the same place. All right, here we go. Feet hip width apart or maybe a bit wider. Okay, remember you can use your hands as guides on your chair if you need to. And let's begin. Descending nice and slow. One, two, avoid the plop. Three and four. Okay, and we're up. And one, two, and down. One, two, three, four, and up. And one, two, and smile and begin. One, <laughs> two, three, and four. Good, and we're up. That's it. And one, two, good, and down. One, two, three, and four. Good, good, and up. Good, and one, good, Teresa. Two, and down, that's it. One, two, three, and four. Great job, and up, good, Margaret. And one, two, last time. One, two, three, and four, and up. And one, and two, and rest. Good. So that little variable right there just gives the brain more to think about. It may not be extremely difficult. That's not, that's not really the point. The point is just to challenge the brain. Of course, Balance University, as you go through school, you progress, right, from freshman, sophomore, so on, bachelor's, master's, doctorate. So what we want to do here is progress the exercises. Eventually, we'll get to the point maybe where we close our eyes, but we're building. It's just building blocks, okay? All right, guys, if you need a drink, get you a sip. We're going to stand behind our chair. I want to put the chair on my left leg again. <clears throat> All right. And, and the same exercise as before, bringing our leg out with a pause and then back in, okay? Here we go. Nice and tall. Find something in front of you on the wall, maybe something outside if you're standing in front of a window to focus on. All right, we're gonna be shifting our weight to our left foot, lifting our right foot in the air. We're gonna bring it out, hold, and in. Perfect. Two, and in. Three, and in. Good, four, and in, five, and in, six, in, seven, in, eight, in, great job, nine, in, ten, in, eleven, in, last one, 12, and in. Whoa! You feel that? You feel that lower leg on fire? That's exactly what we want because all those muscles are having to fire, changing direction to keep us erect. Good. Let's change to the other side. Great stuff. All right, here we go. Same song and dance. All right, we're gonna shift to the right leg. Remember, bend your knee, raising that left foot in the air. All right, and out, hold, and in. There's one. 
and two, three, four, good, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, there, there you go, eleven, twelve, and rest. Awesome. Good. That is our strength pillar. Those are the two exercises you'll be doing this week in our strength pillar. Any questions? Anyone have any questions? Okay. You can go on the email. You can click the link. It'll take you to our video library. If you haven't gone to that yet, please check it out. There's 100, 200 videos in there. Every exercise that is in Balance University is in that video library, as well as modifications. And when I say modifications, I mean uh, make easier versions of the exercise and progressions uh, where we progress the exercise to make it a little harder. So check that link out on the, on the, uh, on the um, email. Also, you can download the Balance University app. Um, look for the logo in the App Store, Google Play Store. If you type in Balance University, you can download it. And it has the first three weeks free. And it's a $2.99 per month subscription to get access to the rest of the program. But those have videos on them as well. So as, as well as tons of information and checklists, guys. Checklists, you can go through your house and identify different areas that maybe you weren't or haven't thought of before uh, that could be trip hazards or, or fall hazards, okay? All right, moving into our no questions. No questions? Okay. Awesome. Moving into our posture pillar. Our posture pillar. Standing, we're going to use our band today. Using our band. So let's grab our band. All right. Now, you're going to love this exercise because it's not going to require a whole lot of movement here. But what I want to do is build your repertoire uh, of exercises and what you can do. So let me show you. We're going to step on our band, okay? This exercise, make sure you have a good, firm step on it, all right? And if you don't have a band, uh, if, you, if you send Rose your address, I will send you a band free of charge. Uh, if you don't have a band, let me demonstrate this particular exercise, and I'll show you what we'll do if we don't have a band. So what we're going to do, you see my shoulders, how they're put, being pulled down? My shoulders are back. I'm just going to pull my shoulders up to my ears and hold and down. Pulling my shoulders up and down. And if you don't have a band, it's just simply pulling up and down. That's it. Bend your knees up and down. And we'll do this all together, okay? Here we go. And up, hold and down, and up, hold, and down, and up, hold, good, and down, and up, and down, good. This is like when my wife asks me questions, hey, do you know such and such? No, I don't know. I don't know. Up, and down, good, five more. Up, and down, and up, that's it, really get them up there, and down, try to touch your ears, and up, and down, that's it, last one, uh, two more, I'm sorry, up, down, last one, up, and down, good, 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 you can really start to feel your, your trapezius muscles, right, your shoulders starting to work, what we want to do is we want to build those shoulders so they act as anchors, right? And they pull those shoulders back as we've talked about before. Good. Our, oh, second exercise, the infamous overhead pop squat with your band. Now, you guys, 
uh, will recognize this as soon as I move into position. Um, maybe not by name, but you'll certainly recognize it by position. We're going to take our band at, at, at uh, leg width apart, okay? If we don't have a band, we're just going to take our hands and go straight in the air. And my hands are going to be directly above my head. Now, if this doesn't feel safe for you, you can do one hand or you don't have to do any hands at all, all right? You can put your hands uh, to your head. You can cross your chest. If this is comfortable and you're confident, we've got our hands over our head and we're just simply going to go down and hold one, two, three, and up. Okay, so where you're going to feel this is in your core, right? This is also known as the founders of a founders exercise. Very, very great core movement. Plank, this founders exercise is really stimulating. It's maximizing the stimulation of those core muscles, all right? Our hands are up. We want to try to push them back by our ears, and we're going to go down, stick your bottom out. Really try to keep those hands back and up, and you'll really feel that lower back start to work. And sticking that bottom out, we're down, shifting your weight to your heels, and up. Good. And down. And up. That's it. And down. Good. And up. And down. Hold. And up, that's it. Try to make sure my knees stay over my toes and down. If you notice, my knees are staying over my toes. They're not caving in. And up. Last one. Down. Hold, hold, hold. And up. And relax. Good. Now, you may notice your heart rate rising a little bit. That's because we're doing a little bit of extra work. A surefire way to get your heart rate up if you're exercising is to raise your hands in the air. The reason that gets your heart rate up, as you can hear me hopping and popping a little bit, is because now my heart has to pump blood against gravity to get it up into my arms. So, and of course, if you know blood vessels, if you had any type of um, heart issues or blood vessels, you know we have like little pumps that help move the blood along, but nonetheless. All right, let's step back onto our band. We'll use the opposite foot this time. This time, let's use the opposite foot. <clears throat> Very good. All right. Everyone ready? All right. Now, I want to have some tension here. I don't want it to be loose. I don't want it to be loose. I definitely want to have some tension. And the great thing about bands is you can vary the tension yourself. Okay? You can make it easier or harder as you need. Everyone ready? Knees slightly bent. And we're up, hold, and down. And up and down. Wonderful. Up and down. And up and down. That's it. Up and down. Let's see if I can get you a lateral view here. And up. That really doesn't help when you wear a black shirt, does it? And down. Good. And up. And down, three more. Up. And down. And up. And down, try to touch those ears. And up. And down. Great job. Good, good, all right. Now we'll be back to our overhead pop squats. So anytime you'll see it on the sheet as OH, and that abbreviation just stands for overhead, all right? So let's go ahead, guys, and take position. Our feet are hip, wide, hip width apart, maybe a bit wider, all right? Our hands are in the air. That's it. Good, good. And we're going down nice and slow. We're going to hold. And we're up. Fantastic. Remember, stick your bottom out. And down, stick that bottom out, push your arms back, hold, and up, excellent. And down, hold, up, good. We're down, hold, and up. 
that's it, and down, hold, and up, good, we're going to shoot for three more, and down, hold, that's it, and up, there you go, you feel that band, pull that band apart, and down, that's it, hold, that's it, and up, one more for good luck, and down, hold, and up, and rest. Man, you feel your shoulders, you feel your lower back. Wonderful exercise, wonderful exercise. Um, a really, really good friend of mine travels all over the world giving lectures. Uh, a doctor, he showed me that exercise, and the first time I did it, uh, he had no mercy on me. <laughs> he did not have any sympathy or empathy. I was sweating big time, but fantastic exercise. It's a good alternate for a plank. So if you have any low back pain, and for some reason you can't do planks, that's one of the, that's the best exercise for, for back pain. Founders exercise, what we just did, this overhead pop squat, is, is where it's at, okay? Any questions there? That's our posture pillar. Good, good. Grab a shot of water. We're gonna come right back to it. I'm gonna get a quick drink and we're gonna move into my favorite pillar, the flexibility pillar. Sure. Uh, could, could be, could be. Do, do you, um, so you don't have any joint replacements there in the knees? Okay. Um, is it painful? Does it hurt? Okay. Uh, what that could be is, is cartilage or lack thereof. Uh, that that is moving around and making that sound if it doesn't hurt you don't feel any sharp pain and if you don't feel any dull aching pain after the exercise I would say it was okay it can be a little uncomfortable to hear and feel what you could do is just go down uh, less instead of going so deep maybe stop before getting so deep and as you build your confidence uh, maybe some of that cartilage will move out of the way as you become uh, more efficient in the movement, becomes more familiar, and, and maybe that will help. It'll help subside. Oh, you're very welcome. All right. Anyone else? Any questions? Anybody who's still wondering why I'm still a Cowboys fan? Because I don't know that answer either. So, <laughs> all right. All right, guys. Let's move into our chairs here. We're going to sit in our chair. All right. Good, good. And th these are classics here. The flexibility, it really doesn't change a whole lot. It's important that our muscles can move through their required range of motion. And it's pretty simple stuff, straightforward stuff. You know, we have a lot of variety when it comes to different posture exercises or strengthening exercises. We can really get creative and add some uh, variety. Flexibility is a bit different, right? In order to add and build elasticity in our muscles, we have to stretch every day. So I noticed everyone woke up this morning. That's a great thing. When you woke up, did you stretch this morning? In other words, as you're sitting in bed, right? Try to sit straight in a 90 degree angle. Some of you, this may be very easy. For, for a lot of folks, this is really difficult. So what you may have to do is if you can, put your arms behind you or scoot your body, your torso, all the way back to the headboard. And what I want you to do is if you can sit this far with relative ease, take your hands and you're gonna crawl out in front with your fingers, tucking your chin to your chest. What this does is this stretches the hamstrings, you'll feel it in the calves probably, the glutes and the lower back. It also runs all the way up and you'll feel it in your cervical, in your, in your neck. And you're just gonna hold for 20 seconds. In class, however, good news, I'm not gonna make anyone get on the floor. We're gonna scoot to the edge of our chairs. I want you to slide to the edge of your seat. That's it. Nice and tall, we're gonna extend our left leg out in front of us, all right? Both hands, we're going to slide them down our leg, and you're just going to hold that stretch there. It's okay if your knees bent. It's okay if your toes pointing straight or if your toes pointing up. 
but you want to feel a nice comfortable stretch in the back of the leg or the back of the knee. You may even feel it in the calf. That's okay. Good. In five, four, three, two, one, and we'll rotate. Good. And we'll do the other side, the right leg, the same exact way. Tucking our chin to our chest, taking our hands and sliding it down. There we go. And holding for approximately 20 seconds. Good. And five, four, three, two, one, and time. Good. Good, good. Now I'm going to ask you to move back into your chair for me. Slide all the way back. If you can help it, try not to put your back on the chair. Just get your bottom into that little crease there in that 90 degree angle. And what we're going to do is our neck stretch or the self cervical stretch. This is the crazy Amazon stretch. You're going to take your uh, left hand and you're going to hold the chair. Okay, you're going to hold and I like to hold towards the back. Okay, we're going to take our right hand across our belly and we're going to lean and look to the right. So right hand across while we're holding, we're going to lean and look to the right. And you're going to, boy, you're going to feel a big time stretch in your neck, your shoulder. That's it. You can look up. You can look down. Do a bit of exploring. Find where you feel the stretch the most. I don't want you to kill it, but I do want you to find the place you feel it the most and hold. Good. And five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Very good. All right, same thing going the other way. Taking our left hand, we're gonna cross our belly. Right hand is holding this time. Right hand hold. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna look and lean to the left. Right hand holding, looking and leaning to the left. Same drill as before. Explore a bit. Up, look down. Find the place you feel the stretch, the position you feel the stretch the most, and hold. Good. And five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Good. And that's our flexibility. Uh, ability pillar. I really like the self cervical stretch, this neck stretch, because it serves a lot of purposes as do all the stretches. But this one really is beneficial because it helps us increase our field of vision, not only when we walk to identify obstacles, but also when we drive and staying independent, you know, ha being able to drive is a big part of staying independent. And I have a lot of clients, patients, really, really one of the big keys to staying independent, staying at home, is being able to get from one place to another. So the self-cervical stretch is something you should do. I would recommend you do every day along with that hamstring stretch. When you're watching TV, how many of you like to watch TV, right? Watch Yellowstone or what have you, Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> any, any questions, guys? That's our flexibility pillar. Any questions? All right, let's get to the fun stuff. Let's get to our balance, okay? We're gonna move right into the balance pillar. If you need to, get a shot of water. I think I will. Grab a quick drink. And week four, we're gonna take this exercise out of week four. Now we're going to start with one of my favorites. We're going to start with our trace D. So we have our chair on our left side. All right. What we're going to be doing is tracing the letter D with our toes. Try not to put any pressure on that leg. Um, imagine that you have eggshells at each point, uh, at the two points. So that way you can keep the majority of your weight always on the left leg, okay? Let me demonstrate, you guys will follow. We're gonna move our weight, we're gonna shift, we're gonna raise 
our right foot in the air with my toe in the ground, I'm simply going to trace a D from the back to the front and around. All right, it's not very large. Back, front, and around. Okay, the bigger that D is, the more difficult it is. So if you want a challenge, increase the size of that D that you're tracing. All right, let's do this together. Ready? Shift your weight to your left leg. Right foot in the air, toes in the ground. All right, and let's begin. To the front and around. And remember, try not to put any weight there. Front and around. That's it. Good, there's three. And four. Six, remember to bend your knee, that's it. Find a point in front of you and focus. Seven, we're gonna do 10. Eight, good. Nine, good, and 10. And around, well done, well done. Let's do it on the other side. Good, good. Nice and tall, shoulders back, shifting our weight to our right foot, pointing our toes of our left foot into the ground, and begin to the front and around. That's it. Front and around. And if you can, try to use one or two fingers to hold on. If you're feeling really confident, go ahead and let go of that chair. Good. There's three. Four and five and six, good and seven, eight, good, Margaret, Nina, good, nine, good, Judy, and ten. And around great well done so when, when you're standing in the house or something you know even if you're even if you're talking to a friend maybe a good friend right uh, you can do this right and so let's say the counter is here you can just send it and very inconspic inconspicuously you can just do your D's right so just trying to give you little tidbits I know we're very busy uh, throughout the day but balance is a cumulative effect. It's a cumulative deal. You must practice on it every day in order for it to improve. And little things like this, like our asterisk exercise, such as the single trace D, that's one asterisk exercise. The other for today is our, our leg laterals. Those two exercises are really going to give you a lot of value for your time. So if you're in a hurry, in a rush, those two exercises will give you quite a bit of value for that time that you put into it. Okay. So second our second balance exercise here, and we're going to have a little fun with this one. This is our heel to shin. So we're just moving our heel to our shin. However, we are going to uh, try to do this with our eyes closed. So if you don't feel confident, don't do it. That's quite all right. Um, for those of you that feel confident and comfortable, let's progress this a bit. All right. So let's shift our weight to our right foot. I want you to close your eyes and get your bearings. Okay, and now you're going to take that foot, the heel of the left foot, heel of the left foot, and touch your right shin halfway up and down. Shift, lift, touch, and down. Shift, lift, touch, and down. Shift, lift, touch, and down. Good. And shift, lift, touch, and down. You've got the cadence. I'm going to count. Good. This is six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 
Seven. Good. Eight. Good job, Nancy. Nine. Good, Michelle. And ten. Well done, Teresa. Good. And eleven. One more. And twelve. Good. And eyes open. Well done. Let's move to the other side. Good. Anytime you close your eyes, it's always going to make it more difficult because you're relying solely on that neuroplasticity uh, or neuromuscular efficiency, that network between the nervous system and the muscular system. And that's what we're really kicking into overdrive when we close our eyes. Okay, here we go. Same thing from the other side. Nice and tall. All right. Shift your weight to your left foot. Eyes closed. Get your bearings and begin. Lift, touch, and down. Shift, lift, touch, and down. You got it, I'm gonna count. And three. Good. Four. Five. Six. Good, Sue. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. And 12. And relax. Good. Momentum is an enemy of balance. So that's why we're taking so much time. When we come down, I want to eliminate any momentum before we go into the next repetition. Well done. All right. So now what we're going to do is what's called the single leg hip, fle uh, hip flexion. You're just simply coming up. We're going to hold and we're going to go down and up and down. We'll have a two second pause at the top and then we'll go down two seconds, up two seconds, down two seconds, okay? Everyone together. We're gonna shift our weight to our left foot. Okay, let's take that right leg in the air. If you can, if you can't, get it as high as you can. All right, if you can get it parallel with the ground, let's do that, all right? And we're down, one, two, and up, one, two, down, one, two, and up, one, two. Bend your knee uh, of your left leg, that's it, and up. If you can hold on with one or two fingers, you're doing really good. If you can let go, that's an all-star. Three more. One, good, two, last one, three, and down. Whew, I don't know about you guys, man, my foot is on fire. Well done. Let's move to the other side. <clears throat> Very good. Same song, different verse, okay? Here we go. Shifting our weight to our right leg. All right, we're gonna bring our knee up and down. And one, good. Two, three, four, Good. Five. Six. 
Two more. Seven. And eight. And relax. Awesome. Very good. Last one today is going to be our marching. We're just, well, we have one, one bonus exercise for you. But we're just going to march. And for a lot of folks, it, it may seem easy. And if that's the case, we're going to do this with our eyes closed. But all we're simply doing is going back and forth. We've had a lot of work on our legs today, a lot of hip work. Uh, balance begins in the joints. We have to stabilize those joints by, by increasing the strength around those joints. Let me demonstrate. You guys will follow. We're just simply going up and down. And that's it. Now, if you feel uncomfortable, you can close your eyes. But stay close to that chair, okay? All right. Here we go. Everyone together. Nice and tall. 30 seconds begins now. We're up. Under control. Try to get that knee up to your waist. Back and forth. You want to put your foot in the same place it came from. That's it. Under control. Big smiles. No other place you'd rather be on a Friday morning. Certainly not having coffee or a mimosa. <laughs> Good. Back and forth. 10 seconds. Excellent. And five, four, three, two, one, and time. Good deal. Here's the deal. Last thing, I promise, last thing. We're gonna try to stand on one foot for 60 seconds each side, all right? This is it. Standing on our right foot, we're gonna shift, left foot in the air, Time starts now. You can hold on if you need to. That's okay. I just want to keep all of our weight on that right foot. Keep that left foot in the air. Of course, if you need to put it down, that's fine. But really go for it. Really, really try to challenge yourself. Of course, being safe. And I am going to be quiet so you can concentrate. Thirty seconds remaining. Twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three two, one, time, and rotate. Good job. Anyone make it the whole time? That's tough. Very good, Teresa. Check that out. Awesome. Anyone else? Good. Now, it'll be different from side to side, so we'll have some better luck here if you didn't make it here on the last foot. Okay, ready? Here we go. Shift and lift. A spot and focus on it in front of you. 20 seconds. Oh, good. 30 seconds remaining. Fifteen, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time. <laughs> Great job. Anyone make it that time? Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Good job, Sue. Well done. Hey, any questions? Any questions over anything we've done? If you guys get the handout and you have any questions, shoot Rose an email or shoot me an email. 
Um, you can get my email from, I think you can get, she's allowed to give it out. Um, my, my email actually is just, uh, if you go to mybalanceuniversity.com, contact us, mybalanceuniversity.com, and you can, get, you can get me there, okay? Guys, have a great weekend. Thank you again very much for coming to class. I hope you enjoy your weekend. Be safe. Remember, I read the police blotter, so I'll know you troublemakers if you get in trouble. All right, have a great weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Good job. Well done. All right. All clear. All clear. Thank you. Thank you. We had um, that Bill Myers um, joined after class last time. Yeah. And then